Hey everybody, thanks for joining the, uh, the, the spaces so early. We're just going to give a couple more minutes for more people to join, but uh, we have a great, great speaker uh, today in uh, Sam from VRGEM, and we're going to go deep diving into the VRGEM project, dissect it, and also speak about their uh, upcoming launch on Headstarter. All right, let's, uh, let's not uh, wait for much longer. I'm sure that people will uh, join in shortly. One of the hot button topics that we've, uh, we've been hearing uh, recently is uh, some of the discussions between uh, the way that um, some, uh, some uh, internal ecosystems, uh, sub-tribalism, let's call it, has been um, uh, rippling off into, into uh, the Hedera streams over the past uh, few days. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a great time to be in the ecosystem. It's a great time to be able to see all of these uh, uh, moving pieces uh, coming together. And uh, we're in a very good position when it comes to the Hedera ecosystem compared to the other uh, market cycles, compared to where we were um let's say in uh, 2020 right um today's uh speaker who's joining us on space is in vr jam and sam i know that he has a great experience when it comes to other chains um so while people join sam would you like to tell us a bit about yourself and your journey in the hedera ecosystem what brought you here uh, thanks so much, Tudor. Uh, yeah, thanks very much for having me here today. It's uh, it's a real pleasure to be here, and um, really uh, great to to connect with with the folks uh, that are listening in today. Uh, hello to one and all. So, um, you know, I guess I'll I'll start with a little bit of background on on myself. Uh, you know, I uh, started life uh, over well 25 years ago, I suppose. Started the life of my career in uh, in the entertainment business. Um, and really sort of understanding, uh, helping, uh, I guess, uh, IP owners to understand new ways to monetize IP. Um, did a lot of work with uh, premium content creators from, you know, Grammy award winning music artists through to the global brands and did a heck of a lot of stuff in the, in the live event space. And I guess really found, um, you know, um, somewhat of a unique uh, position uh, as you know, someone who was uh, collaborating both with creators and brands um, in, in a, a range of different media from, you know, live events to digital content. Um, and, you know, I really sort of found myself at the intersection of, you know, technology and marketing, I suppose, to it really. Um, and really developed a, a career path around the com combination of those two things, you know, bringing technologies to bear um, within this context of engaging audiences in real time at a, a la within the scope of a, of a live event or a live activation. Um, and, and this really led me to, to an understanding of, of, you know, there, there being a real need um, for an alternative kind of solution for engaging fans in digital space, you know. And by fans, I'm talking here about consumers or, or customers, anybody that has a relationship with a brand. And a brand in, in, in this sense can be anything from, you know, um, a DJ to, you know, um, a media publication. So really talking about the connection here between a brand and its audience, yeah, or a client in our case and, and, and an audience. Um, and... In about 2016, I was running an entertainment agency uh, and a digital agency in, in London, uh, doing all the things that I just mentioned a moment ago for a really wide variety of, of different entertainment um, and, and branded clients. Um, and we began to sort of notice this, you know, sort of continual sort of decline, I suppose you would say, on marketing ROI when it came to traditional media, um, and also an increasing difficulty of, of brands and creators to really reach audiences via, you know, what you might call traditional digital marketing. Um, and I had had, you know, 20 years plus experience of working with what you might call experiential marketing, um, or, or, you know, sort of marketing activations that happened live in real time, usually around some kind of an event. And what we wanted to try and do was create a way for that same magic effect that you had, you know, when you created a marketing activation on a festival stage or, you know, at a conference, 
create that same effect through a digital experience, something that happened live in real time, something that was rendered inside a virtual world that was accessible via the internet. Uh, and, and for this to be a new way for brands to engage with their audiences um, and most importantly to unlock new value around IP, you know, and find new ways within the context of these activations to monetize a brand IP. Um, and this is really what, what led us to, to the notion of VR Jam. Um, and I packed together a very early MVP in about 2017. And we've been building uh, ever since on that same vision. You know, I'm really proud of the fact that our North Star hasn't moved. We've been chasing the same dream uh, since we since we launched, you know, nearly six years ago. And, uh, you know, there is an, and now more than ever, uh, a, new, uh, a need that is unserviced in the market. That is a need for new and revolutionary ways for brands and creators to engage with fans. And that really is the essence of, of what we're trying to do with the, with the VR Jam business model, you know. Um, and a big part of that, as I mentioned, is, is about monetization, Tudor, monetization of, of brand IP. Um, and, you know, we, we understood right from the beginning that, that Web3 was, was the way to do that. You know, um, we, you know, we're, we're sort of, I guess, are, I suppose, very connected to some of the really early um, pioneers in the NFT space. Um, and we had the luxury of, you know, sort of having some great insight from some of the really, really early uh, developers of some of the, the first, you know, ERC, ERC uh, NFT standards. And, you know, we got access to this this thinking and this uh, methodology very early on. And we built that into, into the core of our product and it's remained there ever since. And, you know, now we have a, a solution where these experiences that we build, they're all about, you know, sort of trying to extend the possibility for monetization and value creation using Web3 and using our own native native cryptocurrency, VRGM coin. And, you know, that's that's really what we've arrived at Hedero to do is to, is to take that business model to the next level, take the next step and really sort of magnify and amplify um, the possibilities that we're, that we're offering creators and brands in the form of our clients, but also at the same time, offer um, powerful opportunities to our community members and investors also, you know, and to really sort of forge a, uh, you know, sort of relationship with, a, you know, the collaborators, I suppose, um, community members here at Hedera, and for this to be something that is just as exciting for them as, as it is for us. I'm so with you there, Sam. We were just uh, on some spaces earlier and uh, in some talks with some fund founders uh, right now, and we were just talking about how important the uh gamification and the involvement the direct involvement of community is uh when it comes to the underpinning tokenization technology brought by the, the brought by uh this web3 ecosystem that we're building in and it's such a powerful thing for brands for uh company yeah and also for consumers to be able to interact with uh, brands. It's so valuable for brands to be able to push an activation campaign and see how that ripples into the community of their token holders, how what, there, there is a direct feedback loop that is enabled by this 24 seven, always on tokenization engine. And it's so powerful that you're building uh, this tech on Hedera we're very happy to to have you here and um, in this spaces that which is called the Hedera Ecosystem Spotlight series, we'd like to take a deep dive into the disruptive projects that are building on Hedera, and uh, we, we 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 love to 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 hear about about your mission. I know that we've been in spaces uh, uh, a couple times so far, but right now we're coming close to your. Uh, IDO event on Headstarter and we're very excited for that and in one week from now um, I guess your token will be will be uh, traded on uh, on uh, saucer swap so it that, will that's... it will too and we are we are just so so very excited man you know there has been such a long road uh, getting here quite frankly and before we talk about you know sort of the the you know sort of the the near term future, I just want to just go back to a point you made a moment ago, just around the I guess you know um, experiences that brands are you know sort of looking to provide to both community members and consumers using using web web three technology and and how important that is in terms of building a relationship between um, a brand and a, and a consumer or an audience member or a community member, you know, a stakeholder as it were. Um, and, and for us and, and for me, you know, being a guy who spent, you know, as I said, more than two decades in and around, you know, sort of exotic types of marketing activations and, 
you know, understanding how to reach fans in, in, in new and, and, and revolutionary ways, it comes down to experience. You know, there is a quality of experience that, that particularly young adults um, are, are, are extremely concerned with in terms of how they perceive value today. You know, um, don't know how many people on this, on this space have heard of the experience economy. Um, but this is, uh, you know, sort of a new understanding of, of, you know, I guess the value proposition of consumption, um, particularly in terms of the consumption patterns of young adults. Uh, and, and this really revolves around creating value or deriving value from the notion of an experience that an individual has from or via a product or service, you know. So no longer is, you know, sort of the economy um, of value creation defined by a product or a service and the quality of those things. It's about the experience that individuals, particularly young adults, have around or, or through the, the use of those products or services or the engagement with that brand, you know. Um, and the quality of that experience is is so fundamentally important and it goes far beyond marketing you know and I'm, i've you know I've, I've used that word a lot since <laughs> since we kicked up the call but you know i mean frankly i'm an artist at heart you know and that's really the origin point of vi jam it's where it started from was as a, a way to create um, more participation between the artists pr principally music artists that i was working with um six years ago when we first kicked things off um and you know we just found a home i suppose found a, a, an incredibly <laughs> Uh, uh, well, uh, well reasoned use case for the same technology around brand marketing and brand activations, but the experience, the quality of the experience that um, you know that, that an individual has using a product or engaging with a, with a content creator, that's key, fundamental to understanding you know what we do here at VR Jam, um, you know, and, and producing experiences that are novel, revolutionary, um, unlike. Other experiences that may be available via the internet. That's that's a, that's a, the, the baseline for you know the offering, I suppose that that you know we provide to to the clients that we work with, and that should be really important when community members you know are, are you know considering joining us in terms of you know getting to grips with the quality of of you know not just the business model that we have here, uh, which you know we we believe is is cutting edge and you know uh, ahead of the curve, but also the the quality of the opportunity for you know value creation that we're providing to those investors, you know, those community members. I hear you. Uh, that's uh, that's a very interesting, uh, a very interesting thought process there, uh, Sam. And I think a lot of us are very uh, excited to learn that you guys are launching on Hedera. I think that overall the strategy when it comes to uh, the HPAR Foundation in general has been to support projects that can enable network effects on Hedera. And I, uh, uh, I guess, uh, everybody that is here uh, with us today can uh, can learn why they saw this in in VR Jam. Could you tell us a bit your about your experience so far with? Hedera with the HBAR Foundation and how you came uh, into the network uh, coming from from uh, Polygon. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, it's it's been just a uh, uh, such a pleasure to finally meet people in in the Web three space who are as serious as we are, <laughs> quite frankly, about uh, you know building something beautiful. You know, um, I don't want to sound, uh, I don't want to, you know, sort of speak negatively of anyone with this next comment, but I got to say, I find that there is a lack of high quality craftsmanship <laughs> that um, is a recurring issue in, in the Web3 space. You know, while there are some fantastic companies doing remarkable things and making unbelievable products, there are also many that perhaps are not or have not and are no longer with us because of that fact. <laughs> and the, the, the quality of, of, you know, commitment to building beautiful things that we found through uh, HPAR Foundation and through everyone that we've, that we've encountered so far um, and just, a, just a, the, the degree of professionalism and business acumen that we found you know, sort of within the, the sort of brain's trust <laughs> of the HBAR Foundation is, is, is totally uncommon and so very different to where we came from at Polygon. You know, it is literally night and day. Um, you know, we, you know, just, just did not find anything like the caliber of, of uh, acumen and professionalism <laughs> where we previously were to what we've got here at Hedera. You know, it's just, it's the two totally different worlds. And it's so refreshing, you know, because we take what we do extremely seriously, you know. We've been building this this business and the product vision around it for, for, for many years. I've committed my entire life to it for more than half a decade. <laughs> so, 
uh, you know, there's a, there's a real sense of, of permanence around the long-term strategy that Hedera has. It just lines up perfectly with our, our vision and our ethos and, and our ideology. We really feel like we've come home to it in, in many ways um, because we didn't, you know, we, we expected to get that at Polygon because, let's face it, there's some incredible brands who've built on, on, on the Polygon network, you know. Um, Atari being, being, being one great example, you know. Um, they're a member of the, the, the Disney Accelerator, you know. Um, but despite these, these you know, um, highlights, uh, the, I suppose the, the expertise, I, I guess, and the commitment to, to, to building high-quality products it, it just isn't, was not and is not the same as what we found here at Adera. And I suppose that has a lot to do with the governing council and the folks that, that have built Adera. You know, these are guys who, who understand, you know, um, what it takes to build high quality products, uh, products that people love and want to continue and keep on using and keep on coming back for more of, <laughs> you know. Um, and that's exactly the same thing that we're trying to do here at VR Jam. We're trying to build uh, a technology company, a software company that is outstanding, that that is going to be around 20 years from now, you know. Um, and and I and I don't think that that long term vision is necessarily hardwired into <laughs> some other uh, Web three companies. So going back to I guess how we found our way here. Um, I mentioned earlier that, that, you know, sort of our product vision, you know, very early on, like 2018 time was sort of in, I suppose, informed by the birth of NFT technology. Uh, so one of the guys that we were working closely with at that time is a, a gentleman by the name of Mark Rupal. Mark, if you ever hear this or you listen, uh, hey, uh, <laughs> I hope you're doing well. Um, so Mark was one of the founding team members at Engine, uh, Engine.io. I don't know how many folks in the call are familiar with Engine, but uh, they are real pioneers in the in the NFT technology space. The CTO actually wrote, I think it was the uh, the first, he actually pioneered the ERC-1155 token standard um, on uh, on Ethereum. As far as I'm aware, I may have the, 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 the actual standard wrong there. I'm not sure if it's Definitely was that one. It was one of them. He was a very, very uh, significant pioneer in terms of NFT tech. Um, and Mark, uh, coming from that organization, was, was you know, sort of collaborating with us at the, really at the beginning of the business. And he sort of switched me on to, to what an NFT was and its possibility for creating new value around, you know, IP monetization and, and provenance and all sorts of other amazing use cases. And and it was really Mark, uh, Mark's influence that sort of opened the door for us here at Hedera. You know, um, Mark has some, some. You know, he's a he's a real legend uh, in the Web three space. He he has all sorts of incredible accolades to his name. Um, uh, but he really, I guess, you know, sort of opened the door for us and put us in touch with some of the senior team at at Hedera because he's been sort of like a casual advisor to us right from the start. You know, he's really helped us, uh, you know, uh, understand strategy from a high level um, and the right way to to craft that strategy on an ongoing basis for, for several years. Um, and part of that strategy too was leading us to the right network that we really needed to be at because after some time of building on Polygon, we just we just came to the conclusion that we that we weren't in the right place, you know, that we hadn't found that kind of fertile bed of, of you know, sort of collaborators and, uh, you know, partners, I suppose, that, that we'd really hoped to, to get at Polygon. It's also a very wide, sprawling, sprawling network with lots of lots of builders in it. You know, again, more of a, a quantity, not quality approach, I guess you might say. Again, I want to speak ill of anybody. You know, obviously, like I said, Polygon has some incredible uh, accolades to their name. So not trying to not trying to diss anybody here, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the 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 caliber of uh, I, I guess commitment to craftsmanship that we found at Hedera has just been so refreshing, and we're really excited about you know building um, the career of VR Jam on top of Hedera, both you know uh, technologically speaking, but also strategically speaking. You know, um, you know we have high hopes to to really engage with um, you know some of the Hedera council members and to really sort of you know build a business model that that you know harnesses the assets that you get access to as a as a, you know an H bar grantee as much as possible. That makes a lot of sense, and uh, you know I know that you're uh, a, re a relative newcomer to the Hedera ecosystem, but the uh, yeah. expression that was pretty prevalent uh, in the let's say earlier cycles of the Hedera network was that it's all substance, uh, uh, no hype. So uh, yeah, I definitely uh, agree that. Uh, uh, there, there's a commitment to quality when it comes to uh, projects, but uh, this is, doesn't only come from the governance council and from the uh, grant giving bodies in Hedera. It also comes, it's uh, deeply um, 
uh, entrenched in the age barbarian mentality, uh, I would say. And um, uh, spot on when it comes to brands. I think it's when it comes to brand credibility, I think you're in the right place. So uh, this should be offering a uh, USP uh, for a VR Jam attracting brands for activations on their platform. But I think another important aspect is the um, token gamification uh, side of things and uh, how people can get involved into into VR Jam. I know that you've been uh, having a, a lot of focus and attention when it comes to the overall token economy on VR Jam. Um, so uh, let's let's uh, dive deep into into that. Um, um, and to every anybody uh, listening to the spaces now, feel free to jump up on stage if you have any questions and uh if you're listening to the recording uh feel free to jump over to um vr jams uh, socials they're very active especially when it comes to uh, their telegram if i'm not mistaken or you can reach at starter on telegram on discord um as 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 the days progress into uh the launch through the ido and also into the uh coming out when it comes to the various uh, products that you are you'll be rolling out uh, Sam. yeah exactly man so yeah i guess there's, there's there's two parts to to you know really i guess you know deep diving here um, one is the i suppose uh commercial strategy that underpins um our planning around uh growing a highly liquid token economy and then the other one is participation which comes back to that that experience point that i mentioned you know we do uh we do like to uh you know uh live by our own rules <laughs> um and we built some some you know really uh awesome ways to create fantastic experiences for uh hedera community members who want Want to get more involved in what we're doing and and make money doing it so i guess i'll start with the uh commercial piece the monetization piece so um you know there's a, a consistent problem that i've found with a lot of um uh you know utility token projects particularly ones that sort of lean more towards the gaming vertical as we do and that that is that there's often a bit of a disconnect between um the token economy and the you know sort of fiat you know fiat business model you know um and, uh, you know, this is something that we have really um, worked very hard to overcome um, and by, you know, what we're trying to do with overcoming that, that issue is bring our fiat business model and the token economy as closely uh, together as, as to be as conjoined um, and interrelated, independent as we p can possibly achieve, you know. Um, so we've just a few hours ago announced our partnership uh, with uh, a Silicon Valley based um, AI developer software developer called uh, convey so uh, convey one of the leaders in uh, 3d character uh, technology for uh, AI um, so what they do is they provide a developer platform that allows companies like us to plug 3d characters that you know you supply or you create into a large language model into a voice to text solution that is really uh quick and and, uh, and straightforward to use in order to create um autonomous characters these can be npcs in games they could be um, 3d characters that are deployed on a website to provide customer service um uh, we've even had inquiries from the adult entertainment industry about making these things into 3d strippers <laughs> there is no limit to to the use case the application for for, for this tech it's it's very very wide and, and and varied and you know it's it's been a little bit tricky for us because we really needed to kind of pick a lane um, so we've we've been working away uh, furiously for the last three months on creating this turnkey product to allow uh, brands and creators to render these 3d characters um, and then connect these characters to an ai large language model that can be trained on any kind of text-based data uh, so um, what this is going to allow business customers to do is to come to our website, quickly and easily create a 3D character, connect that character to a large language model that then um, produces um, a solution that they can integrate to a website that uh, enhances e-commerce conversion, that provides custom, you know, customer support, customer service, that can aid with product discovery, that can tell you how to fix your car, that can play a DJ set. These things, these characters can, uh, you know, uh, respond to commands. Um, they can do stuff like, hey, go over there and pick up that bottle of Coke and bring it over to me kind of thing. Literally 
really that that realistic. Uh, so um, this is uh, you know a, a really revolutionary uh, step forward for I guess the um, you know convergence of uh, experiential marketing, which goes back to the early part of, of, of the, uh, the call um, spaces, uh, what I said earlier, um, and um, uh, artificial intelligence. And then, um, you know, finally bringing the, the, you know, the piece de resistance into that kind of product model, which is Web3 and cryptocurrency. So um, what we're going to be doing is uh, initially uh, simply taking 10% of the subscription fees from business customers that use this product because that's how it works. It's a SaaS subscription service where you'll need to pay a monthly subscription fee to you know, keep your uh, AI uh, virtual human up and running on your website. Um, and that's a beautiful thing because once the uh, ca character is integrated to the website, uh, you know, it's kind of difficult to unplug, <laughs> which means that, um, you know, we tend to, you know, we're projecting quite significant uh, lifetime value in terms of the um, the lifespan, I suppose, of the uh, customer accounts that, that, that we're going to acquire. Um, so then once we've got our, our SaaS revenue uh, being generated, 10%, a gross of all of that revenue that is produced from these SaaS subscriptions is going to go into liquidity provision and buyback for the token economy. So this is going to bring a continual flow of new money, of cash money into, into the token economy. It's going to mean that um, we're constantly buying up the token price and that there is a war chest of, of funds to ensure that we maintain uh, you know, sort of uh, a really liquid, uh, continually growing, continually accelerating token economy. Uh, and this, as I mentioned at the start of this lengthy explanation, is really based on the idea of bringing fiat business model and crypto economy into being a singular uh, entity, a singular operating system. Um, the final part of this is, is once you have your AI virtual character, you'll be able to render this character as an NFT. So the character itself will be commoditized and become tradable using an NFT rendered on Hedera. We call these AI NFTs. <laughs> We've just announced all this today, by the way. So it's uh, it's it's very very fresh. It's literally like two hours old. This information. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, this is not only a revolutionary new way to combine, uh, you know, our existing three D. Uh, character animation sol solution with AI, but also a way to then monetize that using Web3 in such a way that powers the growth of our, of our token economy. So, um, you know, you can you can see to from this pretty lengthy explanation that we've really thought long and hard about trying to build the absolute uh, strongest, most highly performant token economy possible. Thanks for that. And I think that, you know, one of the things that we're going to see a lot more when it comes to the coming years when it comes to projects that are in Web3, we're gonna see a lot more prevalent the model of real yield that is circulating yeah. in a circular manner into the economy to make sure that there is no distinction between the success of the business running the operations or the DAO uh, and the underlying protocol. So um, that's, that's really great that you've thought about this uh, so relatively early because we've seen in the years past where there's a project, it has an overall core business, it has a token, but the two of them are pretty distinct and uh, we're going to see more and more a convergence of uh, utility tokens, uh, equity, uh, securities, and I'm very excited for the future that, that we are together building in the Web3 space. Um, yeah. Now, yeah. Now, Sorry, Sam. Did you? Uh, did... No, I was, I was just going to make one final point about this this strategy, and that is a second stage. So the first stage, the uh, revenue that will be produced for, uh, you know, liquidity provision and buyback, that will just be, you know, sort of a portion of uh, the, uh, you know, revenues that are generated by those customer subscriptions. Um, in the second stage, which will activate, uh, uh, we, we hope, six months from now, um, we will actually begin to migrate away from accepting uh, payment in fiat and um, uh, altcoins you know you'll be able to pay for these subscriptions not just with a credit or debit card but also with you know ethereum and hbar and various other uh crypto tokens we'll migrate away from from that payment model and we'll move to a payment model where you need to keep your bank account or your sorry bank account your it's late late over here and i've had a long day you need to keep your wallet <laughs> stocked up with vr jam coins in order to you know cover the subscription fees and usage charges that come from the continued operation of your uh, virtual virtual human you know so, so it'll be about actually 
charging those business customers in our tokens and getting, uh, you know, sort of this sort of notion that they need to sort of prepay or buy a certain volume of tokens in order to sustain the operation of their virtual human <clears throat> to sort of, you know, keep it running on their on their website or, or, or you know, functioning in their app. Um, and that that is where I think we'll really see that that total sort of closing of the loop, uh, 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 to, which goes back to what you said a moment ago. You know where where we then have like a one hundred percent totally integrated system, which is purely based on continually driving liquidity growth for the token. I think you're rugged there, Sam. I know it happens to you a couple of times in spaces, or maybe you got you got a call. Hello. Hello? You got me back. Yeah, you're back. You're back. Uh, how long? How long was I gone for? <laughs> Ten seconds ish. Okay, great. Yeah, um, I think I, I got I got my point across then. Yeah, so it's the second stage of the of the rollout for this product is really just about closing the loop. You know, um, you know, driving a continual liquidity growth as a result of customer demand. Yeah. Thanks for that. And one of the other things that I, I would like you to to touch upon is. Uh, some of the DeFi tooling that you'll be having rolling out on, on your platform as well. I know that uh, you've been uh, very uh, careful with having uh, not only these activations and these uh, SaaS customers, uh, also retail participants on your platform, but also when it comes to the overall token economy, uh, that you're going to have different DeFi instruments running uh, on your DAP uh, that leverage the um the vr gen token um is, is this something that you can uh, give us some more information on yeah absolutely and anybody who wants to find a little find out a little bit more about this they can go to vrjam.com and click the web3 link in the top nav bar on the home page there's um there's some some summarized information on that page about these solutions so uh, yeah um you know having a, a system uh, to, to, to ensure uh, stability and performance in terms of the token economy is key for companies like ours who use their uh, uh, crypto tokens and, and Web3 economies to provide services to clients, you know. Um, so if we're going to, you know, provide a brand with, you know, the capability to value uh, an AI character based on, you know, an NFT mint, that uses our tokens, well, those tokens need to have a certain degree of, of stability and performance, um, you know, sort of hardwired into them. And that's really what these solutions are designed to do. You know, we really saw during during the, you know, the, the depths of the bear, you know, a lot of, um, you know, token economies that, that were intended to, you know, facilitate service provision to business customers of one form or another, be they be, you know, a streaming service or, or uh, you know, uh, a brand, um, that a lot of these, these tokens kind of fell through the floor, which then just eroded the confidence of, you know, customers that use the services that these tokens were connected to and really crippled their business models, you know. Um, and and this is, you know, sort of our worst nightmare. <laughs> and and we, we became aware a long time ago, probably nine months or more now, that we needed to build a far more sustainable solution for promoting locked up liquidity um, and providing a system of, um, you know, rewards that were, uh, you know, uh, community rewards that were sufficient enough to really attract uh, investors that were looking for um, a high quality uh, investment opportunity, then and and who are really more interested about long more interested in long term value creation than you know uh, a quick you know pump and dump payoff. You know, okay, that's great too. <laughs> but as I said earlier, we're trying to build a business that's going to be worth billions in in fifteen to twenty years. You know, not not a crypto token that's going to spike in a, in a month and then get forgotten about twelve months later. That's totally the opposite of what we're trying to do here, which is, as I said, wow, we've already been chiseling away at this thing for six years or more. <laughs> so there are a number of parts to the solution that, that we'll provide. The first is a, a native liquidity pool. And that liquidity pool basically uh, provides a, a solution for staking uh, our tokens using a, a liquidity pair, which will be uh, VR Jam and USDC initially. Um, and this is, is a solution to 
provide a community members access to a tiered rewards program where we're actually incentivizing them to hold for longer, to lock up for longer, to <coughs> stake larger amounts. The more they stake, the longer they lock up for, the higher the rewards they receive. Um, alongside this, we then have what we call a token bond trading marketplace. Now, bear with me here because this is where things get, get really kind of <laughs> cutting edge. Um, once we have a store of a certain amount of uh, uh, tokens that have been locked up in that liquidity pool, well, once you lock up your tokens, you'll receive LP tokens in exchange for that stake. You know, they're your proof of stake. So what we then do is we take those LP tokens and we mint NFTs with them. And what these NFTs then become is a representation of a store of locked liquidity in a pool. And uh, what we're going to do is provide a specialized trading marketplace for these token bonds. And then as these bonds are traded, bought, and sold, the price movements that are created by those trades will actually be reflected in the token price that's printed on a centralized exchange to which this uh, liquidity pool and bond trading marketplace are connected via an API integration. I know this sounds wild, <laughs> but we've been working away at this for nearly a year now, um, and we really, uh, we're really we just about ready to, to launch this, this product. And in fact, we've even, um, this is uh, you know sort of a bit of a, um, a you heard it here first special for uh, <laughs> Insider Community. We've even uh, acquired a, a silicon-backed uh, startup uh, called Not NFT, who've produced this awesome, incredible uh, solution for community engagement and participation in uh, the sale and trading of NFTs. And it was actually originally designed for art NFTs, but we bought the technology and we're repurposing it for use within this token bond trading system that I talked about. And this again is all about trying to give uh, particularly DeFi investors as many opportunities as possible to get access to um, uh, you know, uh, opportunities to trade and hold the token and really incentivizing them to to continue doing that, you know, rather than, you know, dumping or, or, or selling selling their positions, you know. Um, but of course, none of that works if we don't have that stable base of liquidity that's continually, you know, driving and pushing that, that price forward, you know. And we believe that when we, when we deploy these two things uh, in symmetry, that is, the uh, continual liquidity growth solution via the you know fiat powered uh, uh, LP and um, buyback solution, and then combine that with these uh, uh, DeFi uh, applications that we've built, we're going to have something that is pretty unique to in terms of robustness um, and performance insofar as you know uh, utility token project goes and. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, we've, <laughs> we've worked very hard to get here and we're at, uh, we're at the start of something something really special uh, right now. And we're, um, we're just so pleased that we've been able to, to you know, come to this moment here in the, in the world of Hedera. Thanks for that. That sounds so, so very exciting. And we're very um, keen to have you guys live on Mainnet as soon as possible. And yeah. uh, relatively to, to our normal spaces, I think that it's pretty quiet. I guess the noise from some of the internal uh, quarrels within the header ecosystem have uh, captured the attention of people. So make sure that uh, you amplify whatever, I mean, sorry, to, that, that, that you guys uh, who are listening, that you amplify uh, the, the, the value that uh, VRGEM is providing into the Hedera ecosystem because this um, sounds like something that will be uh, trailblazing into uh, the next bull market uh, uh, and as, as, as a blue chip in the Hedera ecosystem. That's um, what we're hoping for, Tudi. You know, we really are hoping to kind of get to that 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 blue chip status, you know. Um, and we believe that we've got a serious shot at, at, at doing that, you know. Um, it's A lot of it's going to depend on the, you know, sort of early success of our go-to-market strategy around this AI virtual humans <clears throat> solution that, that we've built. <coughs> um, so as long as we hit our, you know, sort of business development targets, with that project, that's just going to drive forward the liquidity growth of this token in a way that is uncommon, you know. Um, and what we're looking for here right now is is those early stage collaborators, those early stage believers and supporters who who see the vision for for what we're building here and, and want to get involved and want to participate in what we're doing and and you know um, enjoy the experience of of doing so, you know. 
Um, alongside what we've just talked about, there are a number of other solutions, and we're going to be revealing more information about these in the weeks ahead, a number of other solutions for Hedera community members to really get very deeply involved in, in what we're building in terms of the, um, you know, virtual uh, experiences and, and, you know, the virtual worlds that we build on our platform. There's going to be, um, a, you know, sort of array of solutions for community members to actually participate with our, our team to build uh, unique three-dimensional spaces, to activate experiences inside those spaces um, in a way that is just super fun and totally awesome. <laughs> you know, um, you know, we've talked a lot of serious stuff on this call so far, you know, all about, you know, sort of DeFi and trade and financial performance and stuff. You know, fun is extremely important to us here. You know, <laughs> I guess it's in the name, right? VR Jam. <laughs> a jam when, it, you know, a jam can be many different things, but, but, Regardless of what you might think it is, it's got to be fun. You know, a jam is definitely something that is fun. <laughs> um, and a great man once said to me, having fun is halfway to, to success. And I really live by that motto. Um, and there's going to be just some fantastic opportunities for, you know, community members to really get involved in some really, really amazing, um, awesome experiences um, that are powered by, you know, the, the quality of the, the tech that we've built in our, in our building. Um, and to make money while, while they do that. Um, so, yeah, there's a whole array of, uh, you know, sort of opportunities there that we're going to be revealing as we go forward. So, yeah, we're really, um, really hoping that we can find, you know, some, some uh, you know, early stage collaborators and believers who, who can really kind of join us on this journey. Tudor. Sounds good. And I think, you know, when it comes to, as we discussed earlier about the um, Hedera ecosystem uh, relative to, to other Web3 ecosystems Hedera and the age barbarians inside are pretty close knit um, so th so they're they're uh, not as uh, numerous as some of the participants on other chains but they're very passionate in supporting the projects and I guess now we have you know with VR jam there's been there's been another project that's been one of the Hedera OGs which is uh, just jam. Uh, token and uh, it's it's cool that that uh, it seems like uh, we're building something on this uh, this jamming angle uh, when it comes to tokens. But um, puns aside, um, you it sounds like the infrastructure that you've built, the vision that you have, and your overall business acumen of uh, your company uh, and and the VR Jam project has been uh, building up for a very long time. There's a lot of serious inroads that you have, but Yet, you just announced the um, uh, market cap at TGE for VR Gem, and it's only, uh, I mean, <laughs> I haven't seen such a market cap in a very long time. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah, you might look at a, at a $32,000 market cap and, and, and wonder whether or not we have all of our uh, marbles. <laughs> um, and I'm really glad you've, you flagged that today. You know, I've been really trying to, trying to, you know, sort of cover as many sort of, you know, the USPs, you know, that, that underpin the economy and the, and the product. But that's, that's, that's another very important um, USP. The, the reason uh, for that, the reason that the market cap is so low is because we are, um, Uh, your mic is off, uh, Sam. Sorry, uh, I'm back now. As I was saying, the reason that it's that low is because of the fact that we are fundamentally committed here to ensuring that we have a successful launch, that the launch of this thing is just a gold star event, you know? <laughs> um, and of course, the way to achieve that is with the lowest possible circulating supply at launch to control those emissions ruthlessly um, at, at the start. And believe you me, to get the number down to that low, I've had to piss off quite a few of our <laughs> seed round investors. You know, um, quite a few of them expected to get tokens at, at, at launch, you know, um, and I've said to them, guys, we cannot have you dumping tokens at the launch. I'm just not going to risk it. Uh, there is too much at stake here. Uh, you're going to have to wait. You'll thank me when the token price is 20x three days after we launch. Please just support me here. And to their credit, almost all of them have gone, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, these are all guys that that that, that bought into the vision for for what we're building here. Uh, to do, but you know, it's it's I've I've had to really sort of you know go above and beyond to ensure that that um, you know we have the absolute minimum 
circulating supply at launch and for that to be fundamental to our strategy to ensure that we get a gold run in terms of a liftoff. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's uh, I've got to emphasize it. It's pretty unheard of. Um, <laughs> so we uh, could you tell us a bit more about the upcoming IDO events that we're going to be rolling out? We, we, we're having one tomorrow when we're going to have a private round. Uh, and then correct. we're going to have two pools uh, next week, followed initially by the uh, followed immediately after uh, by the listing on on Saucer Swap. Could you tell us a bit more about um, uh, these uh, these events? Yeah, sure. Too. So the, the private sale is really us, uh, you know, sort of <clears throat> uh, throwing our arms around the Hedera community. <laughs> uh, you know, those uh, those private sale investors are going to get access to the seed round price. Uh, you know, they're actually going to get far better terms in terms of, you know, um, emissions, et cetera, uh, than, the, than the seed round investors will, who include some of, you know, um, Web3's top venture capital firms. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's really us trying to put our very best foot forward with the, with the private round and, you know, sort of make, uh, you know, sort of a, uh, you know, what is a reasonably small allocation, let's face it, 60K, uh, make uh, an allocation of, of tokens at launch available to, to the Hedera community on the very best terms we could possibly muster. Um, the idea around is then um, uh, uh, an additional uh, 20 um, uh, and, and 60K. So uh, we have one round. The, the smaller of those two rounds is for a non uh, Head Starter members. So these are just uh, regular folks <coughs> of which we have a queue. We've had, I think, over 140 inquiries through our website in the last uh, seven days. <laughs> We're actually struggling to keep up with them all. Uh, <laughs> um, so there'll be, uh, you know, the smaller of the two pools made available to the general public. And again, the larger of the two made available sp exclusively to uh, Head Starter token holders. Um, and again, you know, we're really trying to keep the, the fundraising amount here um, as low as we possibly can to ensure that we have, you know, the best possible liftoff when we start trading um, and that there is, you know, maximum amount of, you know, sort of focus on driving that price performance from, from day one. Part of our strategy there too is going to be listing the token on uh, the Ishi DAP. So for those of you that don't know, uh, and again, this is uh, this is a little bit of, uh, I suppose, a um, an exclusive. <laughs> Haven't announced this yet, but uh, we're just uh, putting pen to paper on the contract with uh, with the team at Ishi, and they're going to be uh, supporting us to pair VR Jam with a whole array of you know uh, blue chip tokens, um, and provide access to. Uh, you know, holders of, of those blue chip tokens provide those token holders with the ability to invest in um, pools that they run through the, the Ishii DAP. So that's another part of how we're ensuring the quality of price performance right after we launch. Um, and, you know, those kinds of uh, solutions combined with this extremely low circulating supply should just give us, uh, you know, sort of uh, every, every possible chance of, uh, you know, a perfect run here at Twitter in terms of the launch. Yeah, that sounds very exciting. So, uh, just to 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 uh, sum it up for the people uh, listening, tomorrow at two p.m. UTC, uh, there is a private round uh, allocation, which is equivalent to the seed round uh, that that the VR gem token was sell to, sold to institutional investors. You didn't tell us uh, some of the names uh, there, Sam. Could you tell us some of the uh, VC backers that that VR gem has? Oh, Mike, sorry, you're you're on mute. Yeah, sure, Tudor. So NGC Ventures is definitely uh, an important one. Uh, Skyvision Capital, uh, Gates.io Labs, uh, Engine. Believe it or not, uh, the folks I mentioned, uh, you know, sort of who who uh, you know, sort of were involved in in you know, sort of some of our early early adventures in the Web three space. You know, they were in fact the very first investor that we had. Um, we bootstrapped this business for the first four years of its existence, which. <laughs> Wasn't easy, but um, but we're proud of that. Proud of that fact. Um, uh, who else we got in there? Oracle's investment group, um, uh, Torian. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm missing a lot yeah. of people here. <laughs> fourteen um, uh, tutor of uh, fourteen uh, high quality uh, uh, web free funds. Oh, DWF Labs mustn't forget them. Uh, Pannoni, 
Um, of course, you know, Hedera, I don't want to talk about them as an investor because technically they're not. They're a grant provider. But uh, Hedera, of course, are supporting us with, uh, with you, know, um, you know, sort of financial resources. And for that, we're very grateful. Thank you very much to <laughs> the wonderful uh, team at uh, HPAR Foundation for all the support they've given us. Um, Epic Games, believe it or not, are another company that have, uh, you know, sort of financed our development through um, grant grant support. Got a substantial commitment from them uh, year before last. So, yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a fantastic cap table, uh, uh, um, and um, yeah, be, be uh, grateful if you could share a link to the moon sheet, which um, contains you know sort of a short list of some of the higher profile investors. Also, um, be wonderful if you could post that in the, in the uh, head starter uh, channels. <laughs> is is this uh is this a tweet that you have shared uh, recently? Uh yes, it, indeed. You could share it from from our channel uh, earlier today. We uh, we posted the uh, the, uh, the moon sheet earlier on today on our, on our yes. channels. But um, <laughs> I could certainly <laughs> share it with your team again after after we get off here today. No worries. No, we, we'll. Uh, I'll, I'll try to pin it up on the on the spaces now. Um, and one of the one of the things that that you you mentioned uh, there, Sam, is that. The, um, the the people that will be participating in the private round tomorrow will actually have even better terms than some of these uh, uh, VC partners, but substantially uh, better. <laughs> uh, yeah, we really have tried to to do our absolute level best to to, to um, you know, um, as I said, uh, throw our arms wide open, uh, embrace. <laughs> um, the, the Hedera community with, uh, with with a private round. You know, we really felt like you know we were newcomers here, and we needed to we needed to to you know bring a, bring a gift to the party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, it's the gift that we'll keep on giving. And uh, oh yeah, <laughs> you know it. <laughs> we're coming uh, we're coming towards the end of the spaces, everybody. So if anybody has any questions for Sam for VR Jam uh, for me about the upcoming event. Uh, very happy to have you up here. Uh, so just uh, wanted to, to quickly sum it up. So the VR Gem token will be in a private sale event on Head Starter DAP uh, tomorrow at 2 p.m. UTC, followed by a, uh, a public IDO uh, where um, you, you can still register to the public IDO until um, late on Monday. And the public IDO will be happening Wednesday at... Uh, at 2 p.m. UTC again, there will be two pools, one for HST holders. So if you are a tier three or tier two HST token holder, you already have a guaranteed allocation for the public IDO. But if you are a, 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 a tier one holder and that's an entry level of only 5K uh, HST, then uh, please uh, join the allow list on uh, up on the events page and uh, we'll, we'll, you will then be participating in the lottery to participate uh, in the um, IDO uh, for the HSD holders pool. At the same time, there's, uh, there's a non-HSD holders pool that is open for everybody, so you don't even need to hold any HSD to begin with, but you need to subscribe and join the allow list campaign and activations when it comes to like co-marketing of the uh, VR Jam launch event on Headstarter. So over there for the v for the non-HSD holders pool, it's a much smaller pool of only 20k USD, but uh, non-HSD um, participants can uh, and uh, frankly anybody with a Hedera HBAR address can join that allow list campaign. Uh, that's a very low barrier to entrance. Also, if you are holding uh, HST, let's say you are tier one, tier two, tier three, you can get enough of the VR gem token allocation. You can still join the allow list campaign for the non-HST pool, and you'll be up in the draw with everybody to secure an allocation for that uh, pool. So, yeah, all so if you're not an HST holder, that that uh, that yeah, the the non-HST pool, there is going to be a heck of a lot of demand for for that. Like I said, we've had um, 
a lot of inquiries. <laughs> um, yeah, I've, uh, I've got a, a queue of, of, of emails uh, that I need to answer. Our, um, our uh, yeah, uh, head of token strategy, Thomas, has been dealing with this stuff, and it's just like overwhelmed him. He's like, man, what am I? What, what do you want me to do with all of these emails? <laughs> so, I think that that uh, the non HST pool is gonna gonna get uh, gonna get swapped, uh, snapped up really quickly. I can't uh, speak for uh, for the HST. Uh, <laughs> Well, uh, 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 Chitter, but I, I, I only hope it's the same. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I hope so too. And it's, uh, it, I think it's, uh, they're all great problems to have. Uh, very excited about uh, about the launch. But I have, we have somebody on Spaces who I haven't heard from in at least two weeks. Uh, so I'm very happy to have uh, that up on stage. How are you doing, brother? And uh, thanks for joining us. Hey, Tudor. How are you doing? Super happy to be here. Yeah, I've been a bit off social media, just working a lot of private stuff and uh, traveling. And I, w- I was basically, you know, uh, wondering, I own like half a million HST now. I think it's like 16K or something. Um, but I remember someone sent me some overview where if you own like 1 million HST, you get like some special uh, kind of privileges or something. And then you just mentioned like the tiers as well, but you know, I'm really freaking stupid and lazy. So I hate like looking in the <laughs> white papers to go find out everything. So I'm wondering in the case of VR Jam, if I own like half a million now, what privileges do I get? And if I would up that to 1 million, what privileges would I get that? Thanks a lot for the question, Tats. And actually, it's on us. Uh, we kind of like have been keeping this bit of a of a, of, a, of a mystery and wanted people to really dive into uh, into what we've built to uh, uncover some of these uh, special features. But we're going to have a huge announcement sometime next week when it comes to the documentation of all the perks that uh, that uh, that uh, you can have with Head Starter. So uh, basically, when it comes to upcoming launches on Head Starter, there are three types of participants that have guaranteed allocations um to all our events so you can it, it will be vr gem private sales it will be vr gem ido uh it 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 was earthlings uh bundle rounds the most exclusive nfts some of the uh upcoming projects <laughs> we're gonna have two two huge projects that i'm very very excited about that will be launching ido an ido and an ino respectively uh that will be announcing next week so for the most exclusive rare pools um there's three types of uh, Head Starter members that have guaranteed access to those uh, allocations. So that's uh, holders of the exclusive coin, uh, exclusive uh, utility coin. There's only nine holders, uh, 17 holders of the Head Starter Legacy OG card, and everybody who is tier three holders of the HST token, and that's 1 million plus. Thereafter, we have two uh, uh, other tiers. Uh, which is 200k plus and 5k plus. In the IDO of VR Jam, if you hold 200k plus HST tokens, you already have a guaranteed allocation. And uh, also, there are some gamified multipliers with the Select OG card and some of our other coins. It might sound a bit complicated for it people who. It is complicated, who... Tudor. My brain <laughs> is exploding. So my question here. Uh, so if I would if I would get one million, would I get the VR Jam tokens for cheaper than if I hold 500k and wait for that 200k plus round? Yeah. So if you if okay. uh, to the people that have completed KYC on Head Starter and have a VR Jam uh, have one million uh, HST, they are are allow listed for the VR Gem private sale tomorrow, and the private sale token is at a higher uh, token allocation, and uh, I think it's at thirty three percent discount than the TGE price. Which T- which TGE? Uh, if you've missed it, that's the 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 the, the market cap of TGE of VR Gem, and although they have huge institutional backers, um, is less than 50k uh so what <laughs> only on hedera uh-huh. are you fucking kidding me less than 50k fully diluted 
No, 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 not fully diluted. No, 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 that's uh, that's uh, that's the under that's a non diluted market cap. So the circulating oh, supply okay. at launch. Yeah. What's the fully <laughs> diluted? Thirty million. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, so it's a it's a minute minute fraction of of the total supply that's going to be uh, emitted at, at launch, and I guess it you know that it's meant to meant to I guess send a message about just how damn serious we are um, about ensuring that we produce um, a, a very high quality, highly performant liquid token economy, um, and and the you know the sacrifices that we're making to ensure that this launch is uh, is a uh, you know a huge success. And I'm sorry, I, I joined quite late. But who are your institutional backers, if I may ask? Uh, I'll I'll, I'll t- take a, a, a random selection: uh, <laughs> Sky Vision Capital, um, DWF Labs, uh, NGC Ventures, Engine, Gate.io Ventures, Oracle Investment Group. Um, uh, I think he mentioned them uh, earlier. Uh, there's there's 14 of them that that we know, and also he that's right. DRGM is a uh, uh, HBAR Foundation grantee as well. That's, that's correct. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It's been a really meaningful meaningful financial commitment that they've that they've made. Also, you know, it's um yeah, it's not uh, it's not small fries. Uh, <laughs> you know, okay. the um, the head of uh, head of uh, head of our metaverse fund. Um, German guy, right? The one who's in Berlin. I don't remember his name. Russman. He's actually not German. Alex yeah. Russman is is very British. <laughs> oh, he's British. Okay, I he, he's German. I just saw. He looks in German. He, he totally looks German. Like if you see an image of the, a picture of the guy, he's like you, you just look at him. You just go, "Hey, he's got to be German." I totally understand why you would think that. And also, he's based in Berlin. No, he's very much a British a British guy. I've known Alex for a long, long time. Alex was formerly the head of partnerships at, at Engine, and I've already talked a fair bit about you know sort of the the connection and the backstory between VR Jam and and Engine and and Mark Rappel. So um, I. I, I knew Alex from from Engine. I also uh, knew Mark, who I mentioned earlier in the call. Just your benefit was one of our most important advisors in the early days um, when we first kicked things off in the Web three space. Um, and yeah, that that kind of connection, that sort of you know network, me, Alex, uh, and Mark was really what led to closing uh, us as as a member of the grantee community. And um, we're uh, we're pumped to be here. Fantastic. Well. I'll definitely commit five thousand to ten thousand dollars just to support you guys, even though I've never even looked oh, at fantastic. your website. That's, but, that's immense. You know, thank when, you. Thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> when Tutor supports something, like Tutor for me is like you know, like if Tutor supports it, I'm in. I don't give a fuck what it is. I just know Tutor is behind it. I'm in. You know, that's how much I respect them. Uh, but I do have a question for Tutor. Would you if? I don't want you to give me like any advice or investment advice, all of that bullshit. Um, but you know, I want to know if I, what would you do? Would you go invest into the head starter NFTs or should I go from 500 K to a million? What would you do if you were me? That's, that's an interesting uh, question. And you know, the reason why we have a fungible token and a utility uh, NFT that can enable uh, participation into the events is to kind of like offset and at least until we have like a uh, the circular model that we want to have for the HST economy uh, to have some of to offset let's say maybe sell pressure of the token that once events uh, pass when snapshots of token holders happen so we wanted to have this dual model and I think that people over across uh, time have been uh, arbitraging the value of different Head Starter utility NFTs and uh, the Head Starter token, even to this day. Uh, and something that you know we're very uh, excited to have pioneered is uh, that for the Head Starter uh, utility NFT coins, you can still burn them at any time if you're unhappy with them or if you see an arbitrage opportunity, you can take that those NFT, you go to, on Head Starter to the, your uh, portfolio page and you can burn them against uh, HST, which creates this, uh, this, uh, this dynamic between the two. So especially like I've, I've heard about some people that have been on Zeus and Zeus, you know, has been the leading NFT marketplace on Hedera for a very long time. Unfortunately, uh, they've they've uh, they've kind of like uh, 
something happened internally as far as I know. There's been a few people that have been, uh, have sniped some of these uh, head starter NFTs off the Zeus marketplace that were severely undervalued, especially since, as I said, there is this underlying value that you can unlock from the utility NFTs into liquid HST tokens. So, um, I'm sure that you'll be able to snipe some arbitrage opportunities and see which one is the best uh, option forward that. So would you get the NFTs or more coins? <laughs> Whatever is the best uh, value prop. <laughs> okay. That, that was a great, you know, politician answer. I don't know which one to get still, but I think you're more leaning towards the NFTs. So I guess I'll go pick up some of those because I could burn them for the for the uh, fungible tokens anyway right and they're probably a little bit more rare so i'll just go for some nfts i guess they're getting more and more rare by the day uh it's it's crazy how many have been burned but we're very happy that the people have found a uh, good value in the product that we're launching and actually uh this is why uh, the same model will be replicated by uh by uh sphera world with uh, burnable nfts uh, by mm -hmm. earthlings they'll be using burnable nfts so yeah it's uh uh, it's 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 there. It's an exciting time to be in the Hedera ecosystem and really build everything from the ground up. Very cool to for sure. Hear what this is time. the floor on the NFTs? <sighs> Wouldn't be able to tell you an exact number. I'm sure that if we had Skelly up in here, he is your uh, daily barometer of uh, okay. NFT prices. But uh, uh, yeah. Um, they're not, not can different. I get a few with like ten thousand dollars? I can get a few of your NFTs. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm certain. I think the last one. I think there was a so the legacy OG card that gives guaranteed allocation to all head starter events sold uh, a few weeks ago at the record on uh, uh, Sen, uh, Sentex for two hundred K H bar. Jesus Christ! Wow. wow. That's huge. I did not know that. That's huge. Yeah, and, and we, uh, when we launched these NFTs, we wanted them to be totally disjointed and have a life uh, by of themselves, so we don't have any royalties uh, fees for them. It all goes to the holders. All right, we've been over the top of the hour. Um, uh, if there's any other people from the from the from the community, we'd be very very happy to have you on stage. Uh, thank you very much, Tats, for joining us. It's a pleasure to to see you. And gotta say, the new avatar, uh, very handsome guy uh, over there. Um, it's a, it's, an it's, an a, it's a pleasure, man. Guy based on my real face. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, Tats, uh, you know what, we should have a chat about, um, you know, sort of turning that, that avatar into a 3D character and um, cloning you as an AI human. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. I mean, people, people find me really annoying anyway, so I think it would be great if I could also annoy them in the metaverse. I think that Damn right, man. Fun. Damn right. And then, and, and, then, and then we can meet you as an NFT and we can auction, 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 auction your annoying uh, double, double, uh, double <laughs> self off to the highest bidder. <laughs> Sounds great. I, th I think I might get the first restraining order in the metaverse. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Exciting. Well, uh, Sam, uh, would you like to, uh, to, to uh, leave the uh, community with any parting words? Uh, yeah, I guess I'd just like to echo the comments I made earlier, which is really, you know, um, uh, you know, trying to send a message that we are uh, really genuine about engaging with collaborators here. You know, anybody that has uh, any uh, desire to get involved in what we're doing here, whether that's business development, whether that's, you know, a uh, community participation, um, creative projects, uh, any, anything at all that sort of, you know, lines up with, with you know, sort of our, our vision and mission, uh, we would love to, to hear from them. We are really genuine about wanting to build a core group of early stage supporters who are inspired by the same vision that, that we are. Um, so, so, yeah, uh, feel free to, to reach out to us on 
on Telegram. Um, yeah, uh, we're kind of always on, on on Telegram, so it's definitely the best the best place to reach us. But um, any any kind of opportunity for collaboration, we're super interested in. So um, yeah, really really looking forward to expanding our footprint in the world of Hedera and really embracing our role as uh, you know an important member of the community. Yeah, we're all looking forward to your launch and your your uh, blue chip status, as uh, the name also represents. Right, it's VR Jam yep. Blue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, all right. Yo, Sam, do me a favor. Reach out to at Web Three Gang General. He's Snoo uh, Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, and Eminem's business partner for over twenty five years. Oh, wow. Um, I think you know if you guys could somehow connect with the. I don't know if you would want to work with, uh, you know, the whole ApeCoin crap. I don't think you want to do that. But maybe you could offer something cool to Dr. Dre because, like, Frank, I, I, I have a company with Frank in London. And we used mm. to do, like, a lot of, you know, ideas around, like, music, the metaverse and hip hop. He wanted to actually build a hip hop metaverse and bring in all the legends. He's also NWA mm. Bloodline. Um, but generally, you know, he's always looking for cool ideas to pitch to people like Dr. Dre, but they need to be like really good ideas. But, you know, one thing we wanted to do, we wanted to create like a virtual version of Compton and Long Beach. Um, Frank is an A&R producer in Long Beach. He's got like a huge studio, but he's usually recording at Dr. Dre's studio. Um, but do reach out to him. Let, let him know you're, you know, my friend. Um, and then uh, try to figure out some way to do something in the hip hop space if, if you're interested. I don't want to like, you know, push you to anything. But yeah. I've in my former career, I did a lot of work with with like heritage hip hop artists. I mean, like De La Soul and uh, Meth and Red, um, Jurassic Five, um, Public Enemy. These were the the my, my my bread and butter clients way way back when. Uh, so the hip hop space is one that I'm extremely familiar with. There is a project that we are going to announce next week collaboration with a 3d holographic projection uh technology company in la called liminal uh and i think that is something that could be extremely interesting for him it is totally groundbreaking awesome <laughs> uber cool technology uh, that no one else has at this moment um and I, I i think that is something that that could be very interesting for <clears throat> for dre and for his people um it is definitely something that's that's been designed for top tier entertainment talent so i'd, I'd love to start a conversation about that thank you so much for 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 making uh these connections it sounds very very exciting and uh, we're gonna be very keen to 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 follow up on the launch of VR Jam and the cool features that VR Jam is facilitating. Make sure that you drop in VR Jam early as soon as they launch uh, their product to buy the Tatsuaki uh, virtual avatar. And whether <laughs> if you want to represent him or if you want to take him completely off the internet, up to you what you do with the avatar once it's all yours. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Uh, this is this is great. See this. Is this is why we need cutting edge tech. <laughs> <laughs> awesome spaces, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and we're very keen to hear you in the next one. We've got some more groundbreaking Hedera projects coming up next week in the Spotlight series. So stay tuned for that. In the meanwhile, make sure that you join the Allow List campaign. Uh, and if you, if you check if you are Allow Listed for the private sale tomorrow. All the best, everybody. Take care. Have a good night. Thanks so much, guys. See you in the next one. Thanks for having me, Tudor. Cheers. Take care, all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.